is it getting more and more expensive to run clinical investigations? Or is it the same as before? No, I wouldn't say that it gets more expensive. Uh, it could actually be the opposite because uh, with all of, with digital health and a lot of the new tools that allows you to work remotely and to optimize uh, resources, human resources and activities, it should actually be, get, be getting, you know, should be cheaper yeah. but on the other hand nobody wants to lose their business model so where you know that you can save money and introduce a new tool you somehow tend to yeah, charge yeah, for yeah, it so yeah. in the end nobody will lose money in this ecosystem so but i wouldn't say it gets more expensive it um because the uh, what you we are talking in the course about the different uh, parameters that you need to pay for you know you need to pay patient fees to yeah. the hospitals you need to pay your consultant and CROs. You yeah. need to pay uh, if you have some boards monitoring the serious adverse events. These fees, of course, they rise with inflation, yeah. but not to the tremendous amount that it will make a big difference now compared to five years ago. Okay. So, um, and I think people could argue, oh, the MDR have introduced elements that's going to make it more expensive. But again, it's a matter of understanding the regulations, mm. planning for it. And if you have to redo things, of course, it always gets expensive. But this is the case now, and it has always been that case. Yeah. If you don't know what you're doing, you're most likely have to repeat it. And that, you know, every minute has a price. Yeah. So the key is to, uh, to know what you're doing. Then yeah. it could be still cheap and use the right tools. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's good. That's a really a good advice. So I just have one or two more questions for you. One of them being, if you're new in the clinical investigation field, uh, like you're a clinical research uh, specialist or something like that, mm. junior one, and you want to get into this area, what is the most important advice you can give to that person? Take a course like this course. I mean, so there are not that many courses on the ISO 14155. So I guess you will have to take this one. But this course... Or <laughs> oh, you said that. So yeah. your course. Yes, yes. We so get that. read the standard, mm -hmm. really. But I re really mean, don't, don't just say you will do it. Like, you know, say we're going to read the Bible and then you never do it. But mm -hmm. read the standard. Uh, underline, make comments, think about it, understand how it's structured, understand the nexus. I mean, already by that, you're going to be much more experienced than people that have 10 years of experience in the field. So you will have a huge advantage over anybody in the field by actually having read and understood the standard. And thirdly, um, common sense, common sense, because the standard isn't the ultimate answer. It's not the ultimate answer to everything because there will be situations that you will have to use your own judgment, your own criteria, and the level of integrity yep. that you have. And that is what makes you a good lead clinical research professional. Like, you know, you have to have know where to set the boundaries, you know, know, you know, what's good, what's bad, uh, when to escalate, all those things, of course, no standard can teach you. It's only practice yep. and common sense. Well, thank you for having this uh, short talk with me. Next thing we're going to be doing is to uh, go in, in the studio, in the middle of nowhere in Sweden, yeah. record the course. So stay tuned. Yes, we are See going to stay online. tuned, definitely.